Let us pray. Lord God, may our words, may our life, may our actions, may the reflection others see, may they all point to and give glory to you. Amen. So we've all seen the stories. Stories about times when people who claimed to be faithful proved to be liars. Times where people who, who held positions of authority or respect abused that and abused those who were entrusted to their care. We've seen it in society. We've seen it in church. I would guess that many of us have seen it in our own lives. We live, we live in a broken world. We live with a broken community. We live in a broken church. And I know a lot of people think just of the actions. And we may not think about the ways in which our words can be as condemning or more than the things we do or do not do. We see ourselves And, you know, have you ever had the experience where you, you look at yourself in the mirror and you see one thing and then somebody else takes a picture and it's like, yeah, I can see that it's me, but I don't like the way that the, the camera captured a piece of me that I, I don't particularly like, you know. You know, in my case, is it my lazy eye or my thinning hairline or, or whatever that may be, you know, but, it, you know, the capt it captures something that well, but I don't see myself that way, but somebody, else, somebody else's capture of the image of me or me in that moment looked at least a little bit different. I remember a time uh, when I was in high school and and I was very, very, I've always been a little bit more careful than probably the average person, but I was very careful about my language at that point. And yeah, some of that was the household I grew up in and the church I grew up in. And so it was funny because a lot of the other people in, in the band that I was a part of, they were trying to get me to, to swear. They really, they wanted to get me to, to say something, you know, something to say, oh yeah, you're, you're one of us, you're one of us. And again, that pressure to, to do what they wanted to do was, was pretty intense at that point. And I tried to find the, uh, the cheapest and easiest way out of that. And again, I wanted to maintain those friendships. I wanted to be accepted and liked by the people. And yet, I also knew who I was called to be, or at least I had an idea of who I was called to be at that point. Um, and I wasn't even thinking about going into to ministry or anything. I was looking at going into the military, but I knew that my, my words and my actions, they reflected on the faith that I held in, in, some, in some way. You know, we heard, heard a, a reading from Leviticus, and Leviticus is kind of the, the harshest reality of, you know, this, this community trying to police itself. You know, a person misuses the name of God, and, and I, you know, one of the things that I struggle with, you know, when you, when you look at what gets censored, when, we, when you look at what we consider obscenity, the one that often gets passed by 
is where we're asking God to condemn something. You know, when we're calling on God's name to damn somebody, when we're wanting God, and it, what that is is asking God to curse somebody. You know, we don't, we're not supposed to do that. And, and again, so we have this reading from Leviticus where in the midst of a fight, this, uh, this person with an Israelite mother and an Egyptian father curses God. And the community has to wrestle with what do we do about that. And so they bring him to Moses and Moses brings it to God and, and then says, okay, well, this is what we're going to do as a community. That this, this type of violation that person can no longer be one of us. They must be removed. And, and we look at that and we say, that's really, really harsh. And I understand that. And I, I'm not advocating going out and doing that to anybody. The reason for bringing the reading up is the seriousness of what the commandment is about. It's, it's about you know, how do we as a community use God's name? How do we as a community represent in our words the God who we come to know. You know, when Luther talks about the, the commandment about not taking the Lord's name in vain, again, it begins the same way. We are to fear and love God. You know, again, just like we talked last week, we're to fear, love, and trust God above all things. We're to fear and love God so that, so that we do not curse, swear, practice magic, lie or deceive using God's name. Now those are all things that center around us. You know, there's things that we are doing you know, whether we want God to curse somebody else or whether we want God to give us the ability to do something to stand out above everybody else or whether we use God's name to cover up a lie that we're making or whether we are using God's name to deceive. You know, all those things are to build ourselves up. And that, that's not what God's name is for. That's not what we were for. That's putting ourselves in the center. And God is the one who we want to invoke to do our will. But instead, it's supposed to be just the opposite. Thy will be done. So what do, how do we use God's name? We use that name in every time of need to call on, to pray, to praise, to give thanks to God. Now, underneath this explanation is one of the often forgotten principles that our faith is based upon. You know, as we go through this, we're going to hit on several of the, the pillars that, that the Lutheran faith is kind of built on. You know, Christ alone word alone, faith alone, grace alone. You, you hear those, and, and, and yeah, we'll go into those a little bit more, but today I'm going to focus in on the one that often gets over neglected. And it's our response to all that. You know, in all of these commandments, you know, we're to fear and love God so that it's our response to what God has done. And ultimately the final one of our response to all God has done for us is that may our lives be solely for the glory of God. May another person, when they see our lives, our words, our actions, our, the way in which we, we practice our faith, and again, that goes down to the ways in which we talk about God. May all of this be your reflection that glorifies God instead of glorifying us. I'm going to use an image that often gets used, you know, kind of for the, uh, the thinking more highly of yourself. You know, the pawn looking in the mirror and seeing the, the king. You know, the pawn thinking, well, I am the king. But we are the reflection that others will see to judge the God who we follow. And when you 
ask people about who are not engaged in the church about their experience of church or what they think of the church, again, a lot of times you will get images that, that don't reflect this. It'll be the church putting itself in the place of God or the church, church's words not measuring up with their action or the ways in which, and again, this happens in every type of society. You know, when those very public figures misuse the name of God or they misuse the trust that's been placed in them and then all of a sudden they are caught and everybody thinks, well, yeah, that's, that's all priests or all pastors or all leaders or, well, that's why I, I'm hard on myself and I'm hard on others. But I do believe that when others look at us, we're called to bear Christ to our neighbor in our words and in our actions. We are called to be Christ to our neighbor. We are called to shine with the light of God. Now, yes, it's imperfect. Yes, it's not going to be the way in which, you know, we're not going to be Christ incarnate. We're going to be imperfect measures of that. But I do think our response to what God has done is trying to live a life that glorifies God. So there was a song when I grew up about, you know, in my life, Lord, be glorified. And as we come to the end of this sermon and as we talk about, again, specifically about our words, you know, and what Jesus talks about in Matthew's gospel, you don't need to swear on anything. You don't need to swear on heaven or earth or the hair is on your head or anything else. Just let your words be truth. Let your words reflect who you are and the faith that God has placed within you. And so, you know, in my words, Lord, be glorified, be glorified. In my words, Lord, be glorified today. And when we gather together in community, may it be in our words, Lord, be glorified. And as we continue to go into these commandments, we also ask that, you know, in our life, in our action, in our songs, in our prayers, in all of these things, that the God who we have come to know, the God who loves us and, and comes to be a part of our lives, the gracious God we've come to know in Jesus Christ, that our lives, our words, our actions may all be solely for God's glory. Thanks be to God. Amen.